The Twelve Kizuki, formerly known as the Blood Moons. A little reminder of the quest run to extract the blood of the demon bosses. <laughs> but yeah, he has no idea. He just like hurled Tanjiro. He's pumped up. I feel like the last episode was such a good one for Inosuke. He's been made aware of Tanjiro's greatness. He feels all in now, emotionally. Demon stuff, lots of family drama. Meanwhile, <laughs> this is so sad. The loneliness arc continues. And they haven't like made one reference to him. They're just like having the most awesome tag team of all time. Maybe it's not Inusuke that gets possessed, but Zenitsu. No thanks. No. It's like the thing from Toy Story. Tanjiro and Inusuke having the greatest arc, having this bro moment of being back to back fighting the spider lady. Zenitsu, meanwhile, just lost. Craning his ear listening for a response for a girl who literally can't respond to him. And probably wouldn't even if she could, honestly. He doesn't make the best first impression. Where some people lead with affection and kindness and strength, Zenitsu leads with tears. Episode 17, You Must Master a Single Thing. Interesting title, different background as well. Actually, I feel like going to sleep might be his best bet. Now you're asking a lot. Whoa, even the fields. <laughs> this gets worse. This kid can't catch a break. Although, you know what would actually be kind of exciting and cool? Speaking of being alone, if he has like a really awesome solo adventure, there's a lot that could happen with that. <laughs> Yeah, this is not... I don't know. I get it. I don't like it. And the solo adventure begins or continues. I thought we weren't going to talk, but we're, we're talking. It's actually not, not too uncivil. Oh, what? That's legit horrifying. And he keeps a clock just to rub it in your face that you're gonna turn into a spider. It's just, it's unnecessary. Salt in the wounds. And to make it even more offensive, it doesn't even have numbers. And it's analog. This guy's just the biggest spider troll. But he's having a great time, as the villains do in the show. Well, it was, uh, it was a fun character. What, what is that? <laughs> I'm sensing some backstory coming. This clock, the real villain. I don't know what it means. <laughs> But it's bad. I know it's bad. Go away. I know this is a lot to ask right now in the state you're in, but could you manage a nap? Could you manage some sleep? <laughs> yeah, there's no, why would you worry about, you know, being poisoned and being turned into this thing? This head that's just there. What's the fear? This is such a great setup for Zenitsu. I'm going to be so impressed if he manages to turn this into something cool. It's not looking great for him, but some people's true abilities or power only comes out when they're backed into a corner. There's no running from poison, right? Although he could try crying it out. So this is sort of it. You got to like deal with this jerk directly. This guy's got a lot of pep and I hate it. I don't know, there's something about his cocky arrogance that makes me think he has a girlfriend. And flashback. I see training turned him blonde. <laughs> How'd he answer that? Oh yeah, this tragic backstory. The debt. I forgot about that. Gramps paid the price. The price of debt. There's some connection to the sleeping thing. Is that how he became blonde? It is. <laughs> That's one method of dyeing your hair. For getting hit by lightning? It's not your fault. Here we are back in another tree. Oh yeah, for that. Yeah, well, you could, you know, not do that. Yeah, that would that would be great. That'd be cool. For all your running away, it, like, did nothing. Here you are in the situation anyway. It's certain things you just can't run from. It's already happening. The transformation. My beautiful golden locks. 
dead. Now the script has just flipped. The spider doesn't realize how dangerous this is. Ugh, oh, no, I, I hate it. Here we go. <laughs> it's gonna be so exciting when he manages to be able to do this. When he's awake. Intentionally. Awesome double jump there. Air dash. I'm excited for this. <laughs> this is cool as the first time. Just just squish them. Just step on them. If it's as cool as the one he showed in the other episode, it's all you need. You only need one. Yeah. The episode title. Pick one thing. <laughs> I don't know if this is the same effect. I feel like it might be counterproductive. What time is it? How does anyone figure it out? This is gonna be good. <laughs> After more flashbacks. <laughs> They're really building up the anticipation for the single attack. Put that thing away. So he's got a family legacy, family connection. Who is this unsavory character? So I can definitely get the negative reaction Zenitsu experiences from others, not just in the show, but I think probably from the audience as well. It's sort of hard to watch someone be that excessively emotionally indulgent, or to watch people get in their own way by sort of blowing up obstacles and making them insurmountable when they're really not. But at the same time, I feel like this creates a, a really nice opportunity for Zenitsu. That would be really cool to watch. And also, I have a feeling that this helplessness he exhibits is probably connected to one of the things I like about him, which is his warmth, let's say, with others, or his sentimentality. I can imagine that he's so open-hearted that basically there's not much room for himself. It's like everyone is so great, grandfather is so great, that a natural extension of that is to sort of just like place himself in their hands lovingly and trustingly, which ends up being counterproductive because what the people around him who love him want for him the most is for him to be independent and to be safe and strong and to take care of himself. And while I think Zanitsu's version of this is perhaps a noisy or iteration of it than you often see in real life. You know, I feel like there's something to this idea, like I think a very silent but kind of deadly obstacle in life is the over-reliance on this idea that if you place your faith in the right people, or perhaps even in just circumstance, the right thing will come along for me one day, then you are in a sense creating a kind of helplessness. Because the truth is no one is coming to save us. You know, like there is no moment that comes and makes you into a hero, let's say. I've been saying this since the Avatar days, but there's no like Gandalf who shows up at your hobbit hole and is like, why don't you take this deadly ring across the country and throw it into this volcano? It just doesn't happen. In real life, the Gandalf for us is more like a realization of what we could become or what we should be or things that have been holding us back that pose a lifetime threat if we don't get them under control. And I think there's this switch that can be flipped that is initially terrifying, but ultimately freeing where it's like, oh, I'm actually the one who has to do it. Of course, you can lean on people. Of course, people are there for you. But there's also something fundamentally important about creating a certain amount of structure for yourself, by yourself. And it's hard to start building that from nothing. But I think one thing that can be leaned on is the things you're actually good at. I think the grandfather feels like if he leaves Anissa with one thing he can rely on, that Anissa will eventually figure it out for himself and be able to like lean on his own ability, singular. And I think there also might be something to his grandfather's thousand blow approach, because in the question of like, what do you draw on for inspiration? Often, I feel like just on a personal level, it helps reflect on the fact that you've been through hardship before and survived it. Especially if there's something conscious or chosen or self-directed about those periods of time. Perhaps you did good, you know, or were good despite experiencing bad or despite pain, so that you can reflect on more positive traits of your character. And I think that Zenitsu falls into that category because, yeah, he has displayed some cowardice, but he's also displayed a lot of sweetness. He doesn't seem jaded or cynical. There are certain things that seem uncorruptible about him. But now in this situation, he's basically facing worse than death, becoming this smarmy spider kid. What did his worrying and anxiety really prevent? He's back into a corner, and I think it'll be really cool in the future when he's actually doing that while he's awake. Gramps never gave up. Is that a trap? Gramps really dedicated a lot to this, probably recognizing it's a matter of life and death. This is one attack. 
One and only formula. There's no dodging this. Oh. Did he just jump off that cobweb? Nice. Looking awesome. Had to just take a second to pose in front of the moon while you're at it. Oh, hi. There's gonna be a lot of sad spider chicks out there. We killed the dolls too, right? Those little creepy baby face things. That's death o'clock, I guess. But does that break the spell or whatever? Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, like, it can actually flip around to the point where he becomes that symbol of strength for other people. It's like a, I don't know, mental thing that has to change. In all his fear, there's a strong desire. Oh, they heard the attack. You could say that, yeah. Do you remember our friend, that blonde guy, that was once with us until we ran off? Don't separate. We've become a duo. We've got a big family. Oh no. Dad is here. He's gonna be the Kazuki, right? Even Inosuke. What if he just ended it right here? Oh, what? He couldn't even penetrate his arm? That's a first. Or is this just for dramatic effect? <laughs> Who knows? Are we setting up for the second matchup? The second duo? Because we had Inusuke and Tanjiro. Maybe now we'll get Tanjiro and Zenitsu. So I don't fully understand this whole sleeping system, but I feel like maybe this was a turning point for Zenitsu and that he, he seemed to be in his normal state while making that conscious decision to fight and stay alive. So hopefully that started the climb that I know is going to happen from like helpless kid to badass. I feel like for him to be great, it doesn't even have to be him finding a way to eliminate his fear. Like it just seems like he's naturally anxious. The question is just what does he do with it? And I think there's a, a key realization to be had where all your fear and all your anxiety doesn't save you from danger. There are times where it can help navigate and can be a useful tool, but I feel like largely that kind of anxiety has a way of amplifying non-threats to the point where you're immobilized, yet sadly does not actually prevent you from actual danger. You can worry yourself half to death about something, and if it happens, then your worrying was just a huge waste of time and energy. And if it doesn't end up happening, then all your worrying was a huge waste of time and energy. You know what I mean? We've seen characters navigate that successfully in other shows. Like, uh, Amajiki comes to mind in My Hero Academia. Super anxious, super doubtful, but like shows up when he has to. Zenitsu has that same kind of potential. And because he's honed this really awesome, amazing skill, he has something of real value to offer in battle, aside from just being, you know, warm-hearted guy during their travels. I also think that that, like, honing one skill idea is pretty cool. This also has come up a bunch in different ways you know, speaking of this question of like, how do you build value and how do you make sense of yourself in like a chaotic world? One of the pieces of good news, I think, is that one thing you can lean on is making yourself really capable, even if it's just in one key way. Failure tends to spiral, but so does success. Like you build one thing really well and then you can lean on that for the next thing, typically. If not in terms of your actions, but just in terms of your self-identity, like knowing you have this thing. For Zenitsu, who's like this helpless seeming kid, it's a game changer that he has this technique. And in that sense, his grandfather did him a real gift. And so then the next part is like, okay, well now you got something or you have some self-worth, you have some confidence, even if you're terrified, maybe you can lean into that a little bit more. In those moments of fear, actually make a choice to revert to the skill, revert to his strength, rather than immediately go to the place of like, I'm worthless and I can't do anything and someone's going to come save me. There's got to be that like emotional switch that gets flipped. And when it does, he's going to be a real addition to the crew, more than just being a friendly person, he'll be an actual real asset.